Mercedes customers are an incredibly loyal bunch. Once they've bought that three-pointed star, they tend to stick with it. I should know, I've driven Mercs for the last seven years and my current steed has just covered 160,000 miles. Why do we like them? Well, build quality, strength and durability. My old E-Class will go on for another 100,000, I'm sure. It used to be residual value, but that's been pretty savagely knocked over the last few years. And today you can't really say hand on heart that the second-hand values are all that much better than the competition. The trouble with the traditional Mercedes buyer is that they're a dying breed. The customer base is too old and Mercedes customers tend to hang on to their cars far too long for a manufacturer's comfort, especially a manufacturer who's in the sort of financial trouble that Mercedes is in now they've bought Chrysler. Hence the need for this, the new C-Class Sports Coupe, a smaller, lighter, cheaper Mercedes that makes a real fashion statement. A car designed and marketed to pull back some of those BMW 3 Series sales and some of those younger buyers who care more about image and performance than they do about reliability and long life. generous glass sunroof that gives the illusion of almost a convertible. The roof slides back over the top of the rear roof. Not a new idea. I remember my RX-7 Mazda doing that many years ago. Nevertheless, looks good and uh, there's not too much turbulence at speed, although a little bit more drumming with the roof wide open than you might prefer at speed on the Autobahn. Inside, well, as you'd expect for a Mercedes, a quality looking materials, the plastic trim looks nice. Uh, the aluminium trim around the centre of the console here is good. But as for the rest of it, well, it's unrelieved gloom of too much black carpet and dark grey in the seats. Although the seats themselves are very supportive and very comfortable. In the back here, well, not a huge amount of legroom as you'd expect for a compact coupe, but nevertheless, full size seats and uh, a decent amount of legroom if uh, small adults or children are going long distance. It's a relatively small car by Mercedes standards, so it's quite easy to place on these narrow village roads. Of course, Mercedes have stuck to rear wheel drive as well, so it's also quite fun to drive around these corners, just like a BMW. This car is fitted with the Mercedes Sequatronic gearbox. It's one of these new trendy paddle shift operations, no clutch and an electronic control for the gear shift itself. Firstly, I'm not convinced. I prefer either a proper automatic or for screaming up and down the south of France coals, a clutch lever and a gear shift. The coupe we drove, a 230 compressor, can break the 8 second barrier in the 0-60 dash and go on to a maximum of around 150 miles an hour. There's also a 1.8 litre petrol, a 2 litre supercharged and, unusually for a sports car, a 2.3 diesel engine, which is only marginally slower than the supercharged petrol car and much more economical. When Mercedes launched the CLK Coupe, it was an instant success, and they discovered they got a classic on their hands. They're obviously hoping that the same sort of magic is going to rub off on this Coupe, the new C-Class Coupe. If it works or not depends on how the car is perceived. After all, they're after an awful lot of Conquest sales. They say 65% of people who buy the 4,500 of these on sale in the UK will be newcomers to Mercedes. How will it be seen in the market though? As a cheap Mercedes Coupe or a very expensive Citroen Zara competitor?